All right, what's going on everyone? Today we're gonna to be doing a tutorial video for how to make the footprint for a through-hole component, a uh, through-hole capacitor, actually. So I have here a data sheet that I've already pulled up. Um, this one actually happens to be for the, uh, the capacitor that I used in this project right here. So it's this one right here, and if you actually look, we'll take a look at the board itself. Um, it's gonna be this one right here. So I'll show, you, I'll show you how to make all the little pieces to that one. So let's just open up this demo library that I have prepared, and I've already made a little placeholder for our capacitor. Of course, typical process is open up the data sheet. So this is the data sheet for that component that I chose. And then we're going to scroll down to this is actually page three right here and um, it's where it gives us the mechanical information so again you have to check that little table like details because again simple components like capacitors they put all the information for every different variation of a capacitor every different uh, like package size and like value they put on one data sheet so for example they have all the size codes here and they have a lot of size codes here in this case um, so just check the table that's going to be somewhere up up here it's going to tell you in fact it should even tell you uh, packaging code and then size code is what I'm interested in so I know mine is I think mine is h4 let me double check that um, it is h4 so when we go to this table we're just going to look at the H4 row of that table. So if you can see, so this is a through hole component, meaning all it has is two little pins or uh, leads that go into actual like through hole vias in your board. And that's how it, it connects to the board as you solder these on. Just like this would be the most, if anyone's ever soldered anything, they've probably soldered through hole components. So you should be pretty familiar with how these work. Um, Okay, so we'll just jump right in. So the first thing, as you can tell from this diagram, the first variable we're going to take a look at is the lowercase d variable. So this is just going to be the value for the actual hole size that the leads will go will will uh, go through to be soldered on. So in the table we see it is and this is going to be in millimeters as well. So we have uh, the nominal value is zero point six. And then in this table, it says there's a tolerance and the tolerance, this isn't a clear explanation of what it means when it says nominal. I don't see anywhere where it fully explains what nominal means, but um, the idea here is we wanna make room for other components of similar kinds. Like let's say the capacitor we're using in that project, say that component goes end of life. Say Vache or this is KEM, I don't know what their full name, KEM is uh say they're no longer manufacturing this and we have to swap it out and say we have to go with a vache capacitor that has a similar package size though but maybe their the nominal value of their their lead holes are like point uh i don't know point zero six or zero point six five right what i'm saying is we want to give a little headroom a little breathing room so that we can actually that's the whole point of using footprints as well uh in that's kind of but that's that's the theory behind the design of these is we want to be able to make it so that you can kind of switch swap in and out as many components as possible um, that just makes for a much easier design process and then you don't have to waste a bunch of resources after the fact whenever you do any type of sustaining work on your boards whenever components go end of life or you have to make changes it makes that process a whole lot easier so I'm saying we want to add a little bit of headroom to this 0.6 value right here um, don't be confused this is not the tolerance for the d value the tolerance is listed here so let's pick something like i don't know like 0.8 should still be fine remember these are being soldered on here as well so when we're talking about 0.2 millimeters like that's such a small insignificant size that it's going to be definitely enough for any other leads to slip in to fit through the holes but when it comes to actually soldering you're not going to affect the integrity of the solder joint at all by giving it 0.2 more millimeters of room to have to connect on if that makes any sense so like i said again we're going to go with a d value of 0 0.6 here so again we already have this pulled up we're going to place 
pad and we're going to go right in the center here and then we're going to change this to one and I actually um, want to do something as well this is like a pro league strat and I think yeah so we want to change the pad in this case we want if this makes it the pad is a square but the hole is a circle so again think back to this resistor thing we did so these things are pads not holes they don't actually drill and they don't instruct you to drill into the board however this is a pad that is around the outside of a hole so if you can imagine it well maybe we'll actually take a look at it in 3d in a second when we're done and then hopefully that will clear things up um, and then i'll tell you why we're doing that so uh, the first thing we'll do again we'll go we'll scroll down the whole size this is at a 0 0.762 let's just go with 0 0.8 um let's just call it even i think the research i did did some looking on the internet and i think like 0.85 is a is a pretty fair number to choose here um next i think we will want to we want to shrink this actual square pad size in a little bit um I think it's like 1.3 is the value I saw on the internet. We can choose because these are not ex this not explicitly stated on the data sheet what these uh well this one isn't given on the data sheet, but the tolerance that you want to allow for. Uh we're using the data sheet to inform our decisions basically. That's what I'm saying. Something that's 1.3 and we'll make it a square, of course, 1.3. We have a nice square pad that is around a hole, and maybe we'll see if we can hit view 3D. So hopefully this is this kind of gives you an idea of what this is what it's going to look like on the board. If this is uh hopefully this is clear to you. And the reason we did this is because the capacitor in this case, in the case of let me see if I can pull it up. In the case of this right here, this is a what is known as a polarized capacitor, meaning that there is a positive and negative pin. Meaning the positive side of the pin has to be connected to the high voltage side, and the uh, I said negative pin. The negative pin needs to be connected to ground or the low side, and this is because of the way these capacitors are manufactured. That there is when I research it, it's like there's a chemical reaction that takes place as a result of applying a voltage to one side, which actually creates. Uh, it, it contributes to the dielectric properties of the material and affects your dielectric constant, which will affect the, affect the capacitance of the capacitor. So, I mean, long story short, chemical reaction stuff, capacitor needs to be facing a certain way or kaboom. Okay, that's that's a good synopsis of what I'm trying to say here. And so the reason that we're making this square is because this is going to be a, another physical um, indication or indicator for which one is the positive and which one is the negative so that way it's like more obvious and we're just trying to idiot proof our, our design here and so we're trying to give as many uh, <clears throat> we're trying to leave as many like uh, as as many arrows pointing in the right direction as possible that way you have to make a lot of mistakes in order to mess this up so next thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna place the next pad so next one's gonna be this one's just gonna be a regular old circle I'm here actually might as well we can just copy this and do that however this one's going to be the shape is going to be round and we'll just leave that right there and then we'll check the data sheet for size that we need so here it says uppercase p value and this is in a circle because technically these could you know they just have to be so far away from each other there's no like actual required x or y values there's just a distance value like compared to like pads on a resistor they have to be in line with each other while well, this does not because it can it's symmetrical so here we see the p-value is the nominal value of five and then we get a tolerance of plus or minus 0.5 so let's we'll just go with the, the biggest one that's usually the what we're going to go with is the worst case scenario which is that on the upper end so we have a p-value of 5.5 so pretty easy we're just going to put our we have our x y distance and then we change 5.5 scroll out a little bit and i think the spacing on this is just fine the whole size and the pad size i think this is this is just fine for us so again this is basically if you're looking to do like the bare minimum this is what this is all you need to do like this will 
this will this information will generate a PCB that, that will work for you if you do that. However, we want to go above and beyond. We want to make our uh, footprints look aesthetic and we want to make them look professional. So that's when we're going to add in some other stuff. We're going to go to the top layer now. Well, actually, I think what I want to do first is add the mechanical layer. And so this is actually a super valuable tip I'll give you in a second because I did this took me forever to figure out how to do an Altium because what we're going to do now is we're actually going to create the capacitor, uh, the actual can body. So first thing we need to do is create the actual mechanical layer portion of this um, body and then we'll extrude it out. So we want to look at the D value. So the D value on the H4 uh, case size is 10 millimeters plus 0.5, so 10.5 millimeters. And if anyone's ever, you know, if you're following along with this and you try to um, see what was it? Okay, so it was 3D body. And it was 3D extruded body. If anyone's ever following along, you're probably, and, and it, if you have used the mechanical layer tools before, you're probably really confused as to how you can draw circles with the mechanical layer because it doesn't actually, it's not obvious. Um, I think point 0.1, let me double check that. Oh, I want to be extra, extra sure, so 10.5, so that should work. Okay, so I think we want to do is place extruded 3D body and we're going to go 10.5. So that we're going to go 10.5 millimeters. Uh, zoom out out okay let's go 10 point okay we have 10.5 right here and then see if you if you go down it's a straight line but there's a way if you hold shift and press space you should get um going to give you eventually it'll give you a rounded version of that you see shift and then okay so here's the rounded oh that's the rounded version okay so here we go rounded version so see how the corners are rounded right here so you want to hold shift and you want to press the button the key bindings are period and comma which is strange but go with it so you hold shift and as i press period it's going to shrink this more it's going to make it look more and more like a circle so we're going to go down we're only down we need to go down 10.5 millimeters why is 10.5 and then yeah so we're going to hold shift until it looks more and more like a circle why we need it sorry we got to line this up perfectly Zero and ten point five. Let's just hold. So let's see. We'll see how this looks. So this looks pretty good, I'd say. This looks pretty circular. So, oh, but that's the ten point five is the diameter. So I think this is twice as big. So this needs to be reduced down actually to was that five point two five. So here we'll start over. Don't worry. I mean, that's the valuable trick. There's how to draw circles with this. So we're, we'll go out. Sorry about that. We'll go 5.25 out. Oh, and then I need to adjust mine. Don't worry. We're doing this live. It happens sometimes. 5. Here we'll just do 5. Make it line up perfectly. 5.25. Excellent. Okay. I don't know why that looks that way. Let me press spacebar again. Okay. Not 100% sure why that line looks that way. Hopefully this turns out great. If not, you I mean you already got what you need. You already got what you came for. So. Okay. So the next thing we're gonna do is we'll zoom in a lot because it's 25. That okay, and then let's do the same thing here. Zero and negative five point two five, five point two two five one five point two. Okay, again, so we're slowly just making the little piece like it's like a pizza. 
making that little pizza. So again, we're going up 5.2. I mean, it's, it should be kind of close. You should see it starts to look more and more like a circle whenever you get to the right diameter. 5.25. This is very difficult when you have such tiny. Okay, and then. Ooh. Okay, 5.25 and zero. Okay, easy peasy. Now we just go back to this point right here. This is why I wish I didn't. Uh, 5.25 zero. Excellent. Okay. So boom, we got it. We got a circle. Like we we did it. Okay, so this is where you want to go uh, edit, set reference, we're going to go center. So this is easy, so you can easily lock onto the center here. Um, perfect. Let me make sure this is, I want to see why this line is the way it is. Because this is a very... I wonder if I can... This is very interesting. Okay. Still looking good. Okay, so the next thing we do is adjust the height of this. So it says the height is L, which is 20 plus 2. Okay, so let's go here and it's going to go over to extruded overall height is 20.2 millimeters. Okay, now we're going to back it on up Terry and then we're gonna go view we're gonna go 3d layout and boom it's a circle it's a can yeehaw now this one doesn't have the pins featured on it um, I guess we could make those it just gets really complicated and annoying to be honest um, but this is this is as far as this is also extremely valuable for again if you're like a mechanical if your mechanical engineers need information like this because you're designing a case this is what they'll need to know. Uh, the on the bottom, those those leads will get clipped so that they don't actually. There's no overhang or anything, so don't worry about any of that stuff. So going back to two D mode. So now we want to add the artwork on the top overlay. So this is so much easier to, to place when you do a line. Actually, I think it's uh, we want to go with arc or full circle. See how if only the mechanical layer had a full circle option, you'd probably be like. That's that's like a that's like a joke to make a circle compared to this. Um, I don't actually know. Maybe I did that wrong. Let me see. Just zoom right in. We'll click, and then we will. And I'm not 100 sure why. Unless I click something wrong. Let me. Yeah, maybe I click something wrong. Why did it not do a full circle place? Full circle. Okay. I guess I clicked the wrong thing. But yeah, you want to put, put something like right there. Right? And we want to change this width. Make it keep it uniform, 0.125, but we did. Um I'm just unless it's like that on the other one, it is not looking good. Oh, there we go. Is that, did that do it? Yeah, so it looks good on the side. Okay. Cool. So nice, you know, a nice yellow ring. And then the last thing we want to add is place. We'll just do a line. We're going to do, do a little bit of arts and crafts here. That. And then we're going to go like that. Except for that's not, that's not perfect. And what I should have done is, well, actually, let's make this the right width first. One, two, five. Control C, Control. That's not what I want to do. Just hit space to. Don't ask me why it's doing it. But so I'm holding Control down just to take it off the snap grid. So this is looks pretty lined up with the center. But the more you zoom out, the more 
doesn't. I want to make this much smaller though. I'm going to make it like half that size on. Because the key is you want this to, you know, elegantly convey some information without it being annoying when it comes time to actually place your components. And then we're going to line this up perfectly. Does it show it's a, you know, make it, I don't care what that is, but I want the Y location. I hope that ruined that one. But don't worry. I don't actually. That's supposed to be easy. This. This just needs to. Well, technically. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to delete this. But yeah, you get the gist. Oh, that looks good. Yeah, you zoom out from afar. Do a nice view in 3D. So here, like on the board, if you can see that little plus down there, this will indicate on the silk screen which one is supposed to be the positive end right here. So again, this is what I was talking about with the trying to idiot proof our design. So this is kind of how this looks. I don't think you can get rid of this purple line in here unless maybe I'll look at it again. But uh but yeah so this this should clear up like there's a that's a huge question that was how to actually create a circle on a mechanical layer but um so yeah but that I hope you enjoyed I hope this tutorial was helpful to you guys. Um drop a like for me if if uh you actually hated this video or something like that. And that'll still help me out with the YouTube algorithm. Maybe leave a nasty comment or something. I kind of like those. Um, but other than that, uh, yeah, thanks for making it all the way through.